similarity or a links with our current nation. Thank you, Senator Moore. Senator Dastyari. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. I rise tonight on the most insidious matter, a disgusting breach of trust and a shameful insult to hard-working Australians trying to put some money aside for their future, for their kids' education, for their peace of mind. Mr Acting Deputy President, I speak tonight on behalf of the victims of Peter Holt, on behalf of the mechanics, the trade teachers, the office managers, the animal carers, the speech pathologists, the pool insulators, the educators, the retirees and the small business owners who put their retirement savings and, of course, their trust in this Melbourne accountant turned financial advisor who stitched these folks up and took them to the proverbial cleaners, wiping out not just their savings and their investments, but deceiving them into taking out high interest loans that continue to haunt these folks long after the collapse of their initial investment. Mr Acting Deputy President, Peter Holt assured his victims that while their investments had a level of risk, that of course their homes would be safe, while knowing full well that these families were putting their property, their lives and their livelihoods on the line. He himself had been bankrupted on paper, but he had rat cunning, some would say the devious foresight, to protect his personal assets from the inevitable collapse. And the media have reiterated, and their attention has once again thankfully turned to those who stand to profit from this government's decisions to wind back the consumer protections contained in FOFA. Because despite a bankruptcy on paper, Peter Holt still lives in a multi-million dollar home, drives a European sports car and enjoys the luxury of midweek rounds of gold. Mr Acting Deputy President, he is a crook, a criminal and a fraudster and frankly it is not good enough when a creep like that gets away with it. Yesterday I met with Naomi Halpin, just one, just one of the victims of Peter Holt. We sat down with Opposition Leader Bill Shorten and Shadow Treasurer Chris Bowen to hear her story. Hers is an intelligent and articulate story, and as I've said, a story of a disgusting breach of trust by Peter Holt. Naomi was a client of Mr Holt's, seeking him for assistance with her taxes and the accounts of her small business. He obviously had a fair idea of her finances and suggested she put money into what he called, and I quote this, a government-backed scheme called Timbercorp. He burnished his credentials, assuring her he was a former tax official, tax office official rather, and he offered her a chance to support local farmers by investing in avocados, in olives, in almonds. It all sounds so idyllic. But Mr Acting Deputy President, the government backing that Mr Holt claimed was merely a tax credit. But the then minister responsible, Peter Dutton, ended the credits in early 2007 and shares in Timbercore, which was nothing more than a pyramid scheme, ended overnight. But what the collapse has in common with many high-profile investments that predate the FOFA reforms is that people like Peter Holt made their money not by giving advice tailored to people like Naomi Halpin, but by abusing the trust of hard-working Australians and earning a sales commission for plugging a scheme that was heading for failure, that they knew, that they knew was heading for failure. Peter Holt was acting in his own best interest, not the best interest of Naomi Holpen, not the best interest of the action group that she represents, that has dozens, if not hundreds of people who this one gentleman has ripped off. Mr Acting Deputy President, the changes to FOFA introduced by Senator Cormann 
announced on Friday, we're putting smiles on the faces of people like Peter Holt and the others who plug these shonky schemes that rip off good working Australians. Senator Cormann is diluting the best interest testing FOFA and the likes of Peter Holt to raise their hands and claim and allowing them to claim deceitfully that the dishonest documentation, doctored loan agreements and blatant lies were what the people like Mr Holt claims was, was the best interest of people like Naomi Halpin. As I've said in this chamber once before, make no mistake, if Minister Cormann is successful in pushing these changes through, he must and this government must take full and unambiguous responsibility for the scandals that inevitably lie ahead. This government has once again unravelled basic consumer protections to allow the likes of a crook and criminal like Peter Holt to abuse a most basic fiduciary duty to allow them to <clears throat> once again con their clients under the guise of financial advice and pick the pockets of unsuspecting, honest, trusting Australians. Mr Acting Deputy President, Peter Holt's case has gone through the bankruptcy courts and the liquidators have been through the loan agreements. Some have the asset liability and income details even left blank. Victims were told by Peter Holt, don't worry, we'll finalise the details. Others showed liability details erased or amended. Peter Holt was aware of what he was doing and he knew he could get away with it. Peter Holt engaged the services of others to disgrace the Australian financial service industry. Crooked lawyers and creeps like Graham uh, Waters of lawyer firm Waters, Bentley, sorry, Waters and Associates, nothing more than a sham law firm, a sham law firm that should be not allowed to operate in this country. You know, Mr Waters was bragging, assuring uh, Peter Holt that he could provide him with, quote, legal bulletproofing and telling customers and clients that you can't go after this guy. I've quite unquote bulletproofed him. The fact that Graham Waters is still allowed to practice law in Victoria is an indictment, an indictment on the Victorian legal system. And frankly, if an investigation hasn't already begun, if an investigation hasn't already begun, the Victorian legal system should be investigating a crooked creep like this bloke. Mr Acting Deputy President, I'm passionate about this issue. I'm passionate about this issue because I feel that crooks like Peter Holt and Graham Waters have been allowed to get away with these crimes. We in this parliament have a duty to provide Australians with the protection of the rule of law. The Australian financial advice industry should not be about lawyers, guns and money. Our legislation, or in Mr Cormann's case, our regulations, cannot permit dodgy lawyers to bulletproof deceptive financial advisors and allow them to skim hard work, hard earned money from ordinary people and good Australians and then leave them repaying deceptive loans they didn't even know they had. Senator Cormann's FOFA reforms reopened the loopholes which enabled Peter Holt and others to rip off good Australians. Senator Cormann's changes to the best interest duty will enable advisers like Peter Holt to, to narrow the advice they offer to self-serving suggestions such as those of Timbercore. These changes open up the door once again for the payment of kickbacks from issuers to advisers, and this includes through the winding back of the general advice exemption, the execution only exemption, permissible revenue, volume rebates and incentives to gear, in, uh, um, uh, gear investments. Naomi Halpin, who I spoke about earlier, is just one of many victims. Peter Holt is just one deceitful predator. With the introduction of these FOFA reforms, too many other people, too many other stories, too many other individuals will once again be ripped off, be conned, be taken for a ride. And frankly, we have a responsibility
in this parliament and in this Senate to make sure we stand up. We stand up for those Australians against these crooks and these crooked lawyers. Thank you, Senator Dastiari. Uh, Senator O'Neill. Thank you very much, uh, Acting.